Welcome to P7 Advanced Audit and Assurance. Uh, my name is Dave. Merry Christmas. And this is the personal Christmas gift I give you in order to help with your P7 exam success. And this is a mnemonic for the question one. It's the risk question. It's the mnemonics for this related to the steps that you need to follow in order to succeed in the risk of material misstatement question in the paper 7 exam. So that means, are there any chances that the balance within the financial statement will be materially misstated then? Of course, we're going to use mnemonics for this. It's called Mr. I. Okay, so you can refer to what is the Mr. I. For example, who would be your Mr. White? Right, perhaps I will be your Mr. White. Okay, just kidding. Okay, so right, so that's the Mr. I. So, Mr. I, so first of all, we uh, can see on your page we've got four steps that you have to follow. The step one, we're going to use the subheading. Always in a P7 exam, use the subheading. Secondly, calculate the materiality. Thirdly, refer to the accounting standards requirements. And fourthly, stated its impact as well. So, let's put this into the real question. Okay, so required is we're going to evaluate the risk of material misstatement. So we are the auditor, so APC Steve is the auditor, and the client is called the Monster POC, with the total asset worth of $5 million. And the case is that Monster POC received the government grant of $1 million at the year start. So let's do that then. So the step one, it's going to use the subheading called grant and underlying it. And step two is the materiality calculation. So materiality here is related to the grant, uh, which is one million. It's not important to use that. We're going to divide by total asset within the statement of financial position, worth of five. So that would become 20% of the total asset. Surely that's more than 1% of the asset here. So that is material to the SFP. So the step three then is where we're going to refer to the accounting standard. So because this is related to government grant. According to the ICE number 20 government grants, what we have to do then is where we're going to recognize that $1 million as the deferred income. When Monster POC receive it. So for Monster POC, simply we debit the cash worth of one and credit the deferred income worth of one. There would be a risk that this is not done, so that would be a step four. But rather, the company will simply debit the cash and credit the income. So that is not correct. So if this is not done, surely the impact will be you understate the liability of one million in the statement of finance position and perhaps you overstate the income of one million in the statement of POF loss if you are not following the IS number 20. So as you can see, the key to pass the paper 7 exam, first of all you need to have the technique because if you are not include four steps in there, perhaps you will only get half full marks in the exam. And secondly, you have to be familiar with the accounting standards knowledge that you've learned in the paper 2. So that will be the key for your paper 7 exam success. Right, so that's it. That's for the gift for the paper seven and hope you enjoy it. Hey.
PC，Accounting for your future。